In this video, we're gonna continue discussing applications of our Taylor series. So for our first example here, um, we want to identify the function that's represented by this power series, the sum from k equals zero to infinity of two to the k times x to the two k plus one. Um, so we wanna think about what power series um, this reminds us of. And we recall that one over one minus x is equal to the sum from k equals zero to infinity of x to the k. And it looks like I have several things in here being raised to some sort of power. So maybe I can rewrite what I have in my series, um, maybe as some sort of sum of something to the k. So let's try to do that and see what we end up with. So we notice that first I can rewrite that x to the 2k plus one as x times x to the 2k. So we have x and then I have this two to the k um, and I have my x to the two k. So what else can I do with this here? Well, we notice that this um, x, uh, excuse me, x to the two k, I could write as x squared to the k. So I have a two to the k and an x squared to the k, which could be rewritten as two x squared to the k. So I have x and then a two x squared to the k. So we notice that this gives us back exactly what we had before. This would uh, be equal to the two to the k times x to the two k plus one. And then I can pull this x actually out in front of my sum. So I have x times the sum from k equals zero to infinity of two x squared to the k. So notice that this part here um, looks exactly like our series for one over one minus x. Um, so I notice that my function that's gonna be represented by this um, power series of two to the k times x to the two k plus one will be x times one over one minus two x squared. So substituting two x squared here for um, x on both sides of this power series. So I see then that my, my final answer is that the sum here from k equals zero to infinity, two to the k, x to the two k plus one, um, is actually equal to this function of x over one minus two x squared. Okay. So what about another type of application problem? So in this um, example here, we're now gonna be interested in using a Taylor series to approximate the integral from zero to 0.35 of arctan of x dx. And we wanna to try to keep as many terms as we need to ensure our error and approximation will be less than one over 10 to the fourth. So recall, that we've seen the um, Taylor series for arc tan x before for the inverse tangent, or I could pull it from um, the series that we have of our common known Taylor series. You wouldn't be expected to memorize this, but we could look up this Taylor series in the table, and I know that arc tan is equal to the sum from k equals zero to infinity of negative one to the k x to the two k plus one all over two k plus one where my interval here is between negative one and one. So I have um, that arctan is equal to that power series for the absolute value of x less than or equal to one. So now if I want to approximate this definite integral, first I'm gonna have to integrate um, this power series and then I'm gonna have to plug in those bounds. So we notice that our integral from zero to 0.35 of arctan x is equal to an integral from zero to 0.35 of my power series of the sum from k equals zero to infinity, negative one to the k, x to the two k plus one, all over two k plus one. So now I can take my antiderivative. So I know that the integral of my sum is the sum of the antiderivatives of each of my terms. And I know that this part here, which doesn't have any x's in it, that I treat like my um, constants, so those are my constants. Uh, my ck, so those just stay the same. So I have this sum negative one to the k over two k plus one. And then we need to apply the antiderivative power rule to the x to the two k plus one. So that's gonna be x to the two k plus two all over two k plus two. And this is a definite integral here, so we're evaluating that from zero to 0.35. Okay, so these are my x bounds, so I would plug in 0.35. Um, for x first. So we're gonna have a sum here from k equals zero to infinity, negative one to the k over two k plus one times two k plus two. And then I'm gonna have this 0.35 to the two k plus two. And then when I would plug in zero for x, I'd end up with a sum of 
um, just zeros here. Okay, so uh, what I'm interested in um, now is approximating the value of that um, series representation of my definite integral. So, so part one here was to find the power series representation of this definite integral of 0 to 0.35 of arctan x. And so that's what we've done. And now we want to answer this question about approximating the um, power series there that we have. Okay, so we saw it was just minus 0. So I can just oops, rewrite this on the next line here. Okay, so now we want to talk about approximating that. Now I want to approximate it so my error is less than 1 over 10 to the 4. So when I talk about approximating it so I get a certain error bound, I want to think about the different um, remainder theorems that we've had so far. Notice that this series is an alternating series. So we can use our alternating series um, remainder theorem. So we're going to use the remainder theorem for alternating series. Okay, so remember what that says. That said that our um, error bound in absolute value was less than or equal to um, the magnitude of the n plus 1th term. So here, my a k, the magnitude of the terms, is the 0.35 to the 2k plus 2 over 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 2. So our a k plus 1 is 0.35 to the 2 times k plus 1 plus 2 over 2 times k plus 1 plus 1 times 2 times k plus 1 plus 2. So let's see what that simplifies to. So this would be 0.35 to the 2k plus 4 all over 2k plus 4 let's see, 2k plus 3, and then times 2k plus 4. So this is 2k plus 3 times 2k plus 4. Okay, so that is our magnitude of our k plus 1th term. So since our absolute error is less than or equal to the magnitude of this n plus 1th term, and we want to find the number of terms that we need so that error bound is strictly less than 1 over 10 to the 4th, okay, that's what we want here, then we're trying to see where is... 0.35 to the 2k plus 4 over 2k plus 3 times 2k plus 4 less than 1 over 10 to the 4th. So we're going to just plug in a couple of um, values here for k. Notice that 1 over 10 to the 4th is 0.0001. So notice what I get for that left-hand side if k is equal to 0, so just plugging in k equals 0 into this. So if k is 0, I would have this 0.35 to the 4th um, over 3 times 4. And it turns out that if we do that, we would get 0.00125. So that's not quite small enough. That's still bigger than that 0.0001. So if we do this again, but with k equals 1, what I'm going to get is 0 0.0000612. So that's small enough. So it turns out that we only need to go up to the k equals 1 term um, to get our error bound within the, the requested um, error. So we need um, up to the k equals 1 term. So notice because my indices here start at k equals 0, if I need to go up to the k equals 1 term, then I need the 0th term and the k equals 1 term. So I need the first two terms. Okay, So the index is not the same as the number of terms here because the index started with k equals 0. So what does that mean? That means that we can approximate um, our definite integral here as the sum when I plug in k equals 0. So that would be 0.35 squared all over 2 minus 0.35 to the fourth all over 12. So this is the um, approximate value of the definite integral with an error bound no more than 1 over 10 to the fourth.